Welcome to Revealing Here Relationship Lounge. This is Coach Deb. I want to welcome you. I have an amazing guest today, a brother from another. And you don't want to miss this broadcast. You know, I know that there have been times when you question your affliction and your battles and your trials. The thing, the focus is always, it takes a village. But we're going to talk about what do you do when your assignment is your affliction? Mm. Brother, pastor, um, Cooper is someone I have known for many years. Chad Lawson Cooper, that sounds like money. <laughs> this brother is, he is a mastermind. He's the next Tyler Perry. And I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself. But I want you to tag your friends, tag anyone that you feel that is battling with their afflictions, their trials, their tribulations, and they got questioned as to why this is happening. Why now? See, we're not always warned when affliction may come, but this brother here is going to share with you what you can do when you accept the fact that affliction is your assignment. Mm. Welcome. Welcome. Well, thank brother. you, Lady D. <laughs> It's so been, it's been so you. long. I miss you. <laughs> Listen, you in New York. You I'm left me. York. You left me. Well, you you know, you you I, I, I had to um you know you you were just you know growing so much and, and being the celebrity that you are. I said I I can't compete with you in Tyler. Let me go to New York. <laughs> you play too much. You play too much. <laughs> I want to tell the wonderful people because they're listening, you know, they're listening and they always ready for Motivation Monday because the goal is to give them something that's going to get them through the week. Absolutely. So I want you to inspire and I want you to motivate today. I want you to share with the people your story. Tell us a little bit about you and then let's move into, you know, the, 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 um, the theme of what do you do when your affliction is your assignment? But first, tell us a little bit about you. Absolutely. Um, well, as you said, my name is Chad Lawson Cooper. I'm an American filmmaker, actor, uh, of course, preacher since I was eight years old, musician since I was five years old. And I'm a husband. I'm a father of five, a grandfather of four. Um, I have had several national plays that's toured in over 150 cities across the country. And now um, I'm doing movies. I do movies. I produce movies. We got, I think, um, we did two last year. And I believe we have um, four that, we, that we've will probably complete for this year. And then we have uh, a ton of movies next year. So, um, uh, God is good. God is good. So that's, that's, that's the, uh, the bio. Um, okay. but it, it hasn't always been, the journey hasn't always been easy. <laughs> oh, wow. Talk to us. Talk to us, honey. Bless us. This well, well, Lady D, as you know, as you know, um, I grew up in a small town, um, called Quincy, Florida, which is right outside of Tallahassee probably a population mm -hmm. under 10,000 people. And mm -hmm. in Tallahassee, Florida was our big city. And uh, growing up in that um, city, um, raised most of my life by a single mother. Um, my sisters were older, much older than me. Um, in fact, the baby sister is 22 years older than me. Um, it, so it, it left me in a situation um, where uh, my mother was considered elderly at that time. It's normal to have kids at 42 now. But um, mm -hmm. back then, um, we didn't have any money. She was disabled. She was on SSI. And, um, and, but I always grew up dreaming. I remember as five, six, seven years old, I would take my house coat and act like I was Mr. Howell on Gilligan's Island. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, when people come over, that, that was my imagination. You know, vision, uh, the Greek word for vision is imagination. That's and right. uh, without, without uh, uh, vision, the people perish. And, and so I lived vicariously 
through my imagination by way of TV, et cetera. I knew from a child that I would not always live there. Uh, from a child, I would pretend like I lived in New York. And, uh, and that's what I wanted to do. Didn't, didn't know that, uh, you know, when God gave me the gift to play the piano at five, or to sing or um, any of those artsy things that it was just a gift um, to help pad my uh, purpose. And, and that's, a, that's a really a good subject. I was pondering on that today. Many, mm -hmm. many times we take our gifts and we think that our gift is our purpose, but God will give us a multiplicity of gifts just to pad um, or make a path for your purpose right and, and the bible says your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men right and, and so um i knew a long time ago that i was not going to be a concert pianist or uh you know a, a magnanimous um musician it was just a, a gift to um to help me to, uh, to get into the doors that the Lord has blessed me to do. So having said that, at the age of 16, I dro ended up dropping out of school. I dropped out of high school. I got tired of uh, just my mother fi su suffering financially. And I, at, at that age, I went and got a job at, at McDonald's. And, and uh, from there, uh, from McDonald's to doing my own part-time business, which was exterminating. I had enough sense at 16 to call an entomologist in the state of Florida that was licensed that would allow me to work under, uh, under his license, and, uh, and which he did. And so I franchised a company called Dr. Bugs, had my own little truck with the logo, everything, and everything was going well, I remember one day though, I would work at McDonald's. My kids get on me about, they get on me about saying Mac and Mick. So I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're grew checkers. up, it was McDonald's. So Indeed. now it's McDonald's. I thought it was. Yeah. So um, I remember one day um, doing my shift at McDonald's in the morning time before I would leave to go do my business. Um, my whole graduating class. Oh, the whole, okay. My battery was low there. My whole graduating class walked into to McDonald's while I was carrying a bucket of ice, dumping it in the ice container, and I turned around and there they were, and I felt like this small. Yeah. I yeah. said, "Wow, all of them are getting ready to graduate." Right. <laughs> Here am I, standing in front of them working at, Mac, at McDonald's yeah. and uh, and the Lord said to me, hold your head up, keep on going. This is not the end. Um, shortly after then, my mother ended up having an accident um, while I was out doing my business, Dr. Bugs. And um, when she had that accident, we had, ended up having to seek an attorney to help us out. Well, the attorney, when we went to meet with him, a white guy, he said, you know, I see something in you. Uh, I don't know you. This guy was not saved. He was not church. He said, I just see something in you. Tell me about yourself. I told him, you know, I'm dropped out of school, et cetera. But what my plan, what my goals and aspirations were. And he said, I tell you what, if you go get your GED, I'll hire you to work here and pay for you to go to college. And, um, and I literally took him serious because I felt it was time to make a move then because I didn't want to spray houses the rest of my life and, <laughs> and work at McDonald's part time, you know, the rest of my life. And, um, and for six months, I, I went and got my GED um, in a matter of a, a couple of months. And then I started volunteering from, for him. Uh, he didn't hire me at first. I actually worked there for six months for free, driving him around, taking him to meetings. Um, sometimes we would fly um, during the course of my first six months there. A couple of times he had us fly on a private jet to Atlantic City 
paid for a suite. Now I'm a little country boy from Quincy. I'm like, man, you see this kind of stuff on Dallas and Falcon Crest. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and we on a private jet and uh, we would go to this restaurant called Nicholson's. And you go to Nicholson's, you're gonna spend a hundred dollars per person, basically. And I was like, wow, I wasn't even really concerned about him paying me. It was I was getting paid by the knowledge and just being connected right. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into a different stratosphere that I'd never experienced in person before. And um, after six months, he actually started paying me a thousand dollars a month. Shortly after then, um, he won a lawsuit for my mother for four hundred thousand dollars, and. Um, he also paid me, paid for me to go to to um to college as well. Uh, worked there for a couple of years, and something happened where I saw something that I probably shouldn't have seen, and ended up shifting over to Tallahassee to a larger law firm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Went to Tallahassee to the larger law firm, and uh, my life totally changed. Then here's this country boy that always dreamed uh, now i'm in tallahassee working for this multi-million dollar firm as an investigator as an influencer um and as a consultant mm -hmm. and in and, and they're paying me six figures from quincy florida from a high school dropout yeah to this six figures and um going through all of them trying to speed it up for you um then i met my well i, I got married i want I, I want to tell the whole story i got married when i was 19 that didn't work okay. that was a failed marriage we had two kids i i didn't think i'd ever get a chance to be um the father that i wanted to be because you know in relationships like that sometimes it just doesn't work out that way right right and um but that's where I met my current wife and we've been married or will have been married on December the 19th for 25 years. Amen. We met at, at, at family of Florida and university. And, um, and I could not stay married to somebody that wasn't my wife. That's a whole nother thing. And, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, and so but when I, when I found my wife, he didn't find it, the wife find it, the good thing. Amen. And, and we connected there. And um, and then the Lord called me into pastoralship. He called me into pastoralship, and I went from uh, making six figures to saying, "God, I'm willing to give up everything because doing what you've called me to do is worth more than anything that that I can." possibly have on this earth to accumulate and if if you know if we seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness all these things will be added so it wasn't about the thing it was uh, the things it was about obedience so i ended up leaving there one of my friends um got had a lawsuit there that i helped take care of while he was uh paraplegic and um he gave me, he, he settled his lawsuit for $4.6 million. And he said, here's $250,000 for taking care of me when nobody else would. And that was my cue to leave. It was just a seed that mm -hmm. helped f facilitate the ministry um, for a while. Uh, but then the, then, the, then the challenges come. Yeah. or they came rather it's it's it seemed it is it, as if i had made a terrible mistake yeah but, but i knew that it was a part of the the, the journey I, you know my assignment so your 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 vision and your assignment to get there are two different things so right. the, so so here comes the process um so this is in 1995 when i started the church 1997 when i went full time in ministry um 1999 um i was attacked severely um the enemy did not want me to go full-time in ministry the guy that i was working for was involved with the mafia and other things and he tried to set me up with the department of insurance 
almost like it felt like I was watching the movie Enemy of State. One day I woke up and found my picture in the newspaper and said that I was over this racketeering thing in Florida and um, that I had racketeered this and that and made so many millions of dollars doing this like I was a kingpin. Yeah. None of it was true. Yeah. And my mother called me that morning, a particular morning, and um, she said, hey, you're not in jail. She was crying. I said, no, what are you talking about? Your picture on the front page of the Tallahassee Democrat. I said, what? I went in my pajamas to the convenience store. And uh, we were living in a, in a community called Golden Eagle at that time. Mm. And, and I sat there in the car and looked at that article. And I, I was literally numb. I felt like I cannot recover from this. I don't even know what this is. And, and you know, what's going to happen? And let me tell you, that's, that's when that was, that was my first major assignment of affliction. God has spoke to me, commissioned me, and now I'm 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 in this thing, and I I'm in a situation where I know people are gonna walk off and they're gonna leave me. Um, I know p p everybody in the city is going to be talking about me, um, and not knowing whether or not I was gonna go to prison. You know, I didn't know what I was up against because none of it was true, and. Uh, and let me tell you, Lady D, uh, 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 the spirit of depression came on me. Like I can, I can tell you, I I walk so highly in depression. I tried to commit suicide uh, more than one time. I would be so depressed that I could just be at a restaurant eating, and all of a sudden I would just start crying. I would be like, oh, I just feel like God yeah. is forsaking me. My life is is ruined. And, and the Lord said to me, he said, stand your ground. I, I went to Miami, Florida um, to see a guy that we were connected to, a mentor to me at the time was Bishop Isaiah Williams. And he had a church of about 5,000 people. My church went down to 12 people. All of my contracts that I had, people stopped paying me because they, uh, my consulting contracts, and I saw the money that I had um, in the bank uh, was leaving like somebody had a running faucet. Uh, money I had in my safe leaving like somebody had a running faucet. And I went to Bishop Williams Church on that particular Sunday. And, and I'm sitting way in the back, 5,000 people there. And he says, is that is that Dr. Cooper in the back? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, how in how in the world does he see me? And uh, and all of these people here, he says, come on, <laughs> on up to the pool. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no. <laughs> and and right. as I'm as I'm as I'm uh, going up to the uh, pulpit. You know, I felt like everybody in Miami knew what I was going through. Nobody said that. He was so nice to me. Afterward, he took took us out to Don Shuler's. And he said, he said, Pastor Cooper, he said, God's going to vindicate you in six months. He said, don't you come off of TV. Don't you close your church down. And don't you stop preaching. He, he he said he said he's going to he's going to clear your name. I remember one event going to AMC the AMC movie theater there in Tallahassee, and a bunch of pastors were walking by and they were turning and and I, I never forget the pain that I felt and and in the midst of me trying to commit suicide, taking a whole bottle of Tylenol PM, wow. none of that none of that worked. None of that worked. What did happen in, 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 in that process, my wife and I had been trying to have kids for five years, kids of our own. And, and so the, the day that I took that bottle of Tylenol PM, she actually raped me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I'm, you know, I'm crazy. So. <laughs> 
But she admit that though. She does. Okay. <laughs> A mess. <laughs> in 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 there came celebrity. <laughs> How about daughter, that? Our daughter celebrity came. And uh, so in the midst of that pain, God sent joy in the midst of pain. He sent a yeah. suppressant. And um, and there were days, because the pain, even in six months, I was vindicated. The state attorney came on TV and said, he has done nothing wrong. This is all a political ploy. Um, there will be no charges. I've, to this day, I've never been charged with any criminal. I don't have a criminal record. Um, you know, so you can tell the enemy, don't celebrate too soon. The the weapon that was formed shall not prosper. Right, right. And and, and um and so you know from from there we the Lord sent a word that said move to Miami from Tallahassee. That's after the state attorney, you know, cleared us and et cetera. And when we moved to Miami, the church had built back up to about maybe 75 to 100 people. Um, I had 20 some odd families move with me to Miami. Oh. It was like Moses right. leaving Egypt. That I never forget that morning. It was foggy. There were the trucks, the big trucks, the cars seemed like they were, you know, mile long. And uh, and we and and we were, we moved to Miami and started a wealthy place, church in Miami. But I, when I tell you that depression was still on me, like I just didn't want to do anything but preach, and and uh, come home and lay down and watch TV. And my wife got pregnant again. At that time, she didn't rape me. Right. Uh, that time, I told her, I said, "Let's go make a man child." And here came little Chad. Let's <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Junior came. And uh, and so um, she came home one day. She had she had started working at Florida Memorial, and uh, she told me she said, "You know, you I'm I'm going to work something backward about this. <laughs> I'm going to work every day. I'm coming home, and you sit down watching the young and the restless." <laughs> yes, she, she said, said it. She said, now I know you don't want to, you know, you don't want to live and you mad with God and all of this and, yeah. and stuff. But she said, what make you think that God can't use you to, to prove a point? What make you think you you too good that God can't if he used Job, you mean to tell me he can't use you? If all he right. met if he played with Job's name, he can't play with your name. Okay. If he if if, if he touched him. Or allowed the enemy to touch him, but then kill him. He can't. Well, who who do you think you are? She said, "If you don't want to live for your for me, or for yourself, live for this baby that I'm carrying." And and, and that's when my faith was reignited. It was it was uh, flame lit to it. Yeah. And, I, and about twenty five dollars, um, still holding on to to a vision. Um, you know, even in my pain, I still there was a glimmer of. Yeah, of, of hope. Of hope. My yeah. Mercedes at that time that I had, the windows didn't roll down, the steering, the steering wheel was it, it was stuck. So I was always up on the steering wheel. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. it was loud like a truck. And yeah. uh, living in um um lease purchasing a, a million dollar house that we couldn't afford at yeah. the time. And God's and I had $25 pastoring though, um, of course, um, and that, that I've always done faithfully. And God said, take $25 and go to the Jewish thrift shop because <clears throat> you don't have any but one suit. And there you're gonna find three suits and take one of those suits. And I want you to go to Rich Wilkerson's church, uh, who's also in Miami, who used to be uh, Paul Crouch's son's best friend. Okay. And they have a pretty large ministry, white guy, and um, and tell him that you have a vision to do telemarketing uh, or have a telemarketing company for mega ministries to push their product. And don't go to your church this Sunday, go there. So I, I obey and I go there, sit on the front row. He had interviewed us on TBN a while back. So I was hoping he would, you know, remember us. <laughs> and um, he happened to be in town that day. I waited to pass the peace. 
and went up to him and hey uh pastor rich pastor cooper you interviewed us on um tbn a while back etc cetera, etc cetera. and i i have a business um proposal i'd like to speak with you about after service he looked at me and said i don't know if i'm going to be in town i'm extremely busy and traveling but um you know you can call my secretary and see if you can set up an appointment etc it's very just blunt like that and i said to myself i said that i could have been at my own church and i'm sitting up in here at this white pastor's church and uh and the lord said go sit your behind down okay now did i not send you here and pastor peace was over <clears throat> pastor rich gets up back in the pulpit and he said today we're gonna have the message by dr chad lawson cooper i could have hit the floor <laughs> and i talked about that i'll never forget I, I, I was ready the lord gave me a message about it's time to cross. And I talked about how Moses was dead. He, he died. And, and for 40 years, God kept telling him to step in to, to, to the Jordan and cross over, but he kept looking for a road. So he dies. And then he tells Joshua in three days to cross over. The compass said, it's right here. Step in. Joshua mm -hmm. didn't see a road, but he was crazy enough to step in and as he stepped there were stepping stones and they were finally able to cross over after 40 years because sometimes we can get so used to watching the blessing from the wrong side that we get we get accustomed to celebrating somebody else's mercedes somebody else's healing somebody else's uh, vision coming to pass from afar that we vicariously live through them and uh and so we can almost taste it but we're not really tasting it mm. and, he said, move, cross over, step on it. And I never forget um, that message. And after, after that, he said to me, um, you know, let me talk to you about what you wanted to talk about. I told him that he said to me, um, well, we just started another business, um, Noni, and we don't, everybody's working on that. We don't really have time to do a, another business, but thank you for coming, man. And enjoyed the word. That was, I was, I was cool with that. Just the fact that Rich Wilkerson called me up to preach at his church. Mm -hmm. And he acted like he didn't halfway want to talk to me doing Pastor Peace. Right. Seven, around 7.30 the next morning, I get a phone call from Rich Wilkerson. He says, Pastor Cooper, come over here and get a check for $10,000. Let me help you start this business. You know, act of obedience. Because in your flesh, you wanted to leave. I wanted to leave. I wanted to leave. But you heard the Lord say, sit your tail down. Yep. I sent you here. Sit down. And uh, it wasn't enough to really start the business to, to make it do anything. But what it did, it it it, it strengthened my faith. Yes. So nearing nearing the end of two months when, when all of that was running out, Florida Memorial um, College was running into a, a problem with their graphics. And so they, their main graphics person had bailed out on, on um, uh, the week before their biggest day of what they, what they, their biggest day of fundraising. And so they asked my wife because they would see her doing little stuff mm -hmm. around. Can you do this? You, these, these graphics, and, and I had also had put her, had her to put her phone number on there because she did, you know, mm -hmm. little, not professional graphics, but graphics. Mm -hmm. And um, so they ended up calling me to see if we could do their donation day book. Um, Matt King Carter's wife, I don't know if you know, but he was a pretty big preacher on the Word Network, and um, I told him, yeah. And so my wife said, "You said what?" Now, you know, I can't do no professional graphics and stuff. I asked them how much you paid. They said $3,000. We're going to do it. And so she got mad with me. That night, the Lord spoke to me and said, I told her, don't worry about it. I'm going to do it. The Lord spoke to me and said, when you go to sleep, I'm going to put this gift in you. And when you wake up, you'll know how to do Adobe Photoshop, just as if you had gone to school for it. I woke up the next morning, Lady D, and that turned into a twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar a month business. We got all of their graphics uh, designs, the AKAs, the 
Florida Marlins. Oh, um, I mean, it, it just obedience, obedience, and faith, and um, faith, and faith. So it's still the the reason we moved to Miami though is because a prophet is Delane Smith called me and uh, my wife answered the phone. She said, put your husband on the phone. She said, the Lord said, move to uh, Miami. That's what God's going to show you your purpose. So graphics was not my purpose. Um, all the other things I do was not my main purpose. Uh, it was all, it all played a part. So right. Um, I mean, that's when I opened up a business here in New York. This is 20, roughly 20 years ago. Uh, we had, had opened up a branch here on Wall Street in New York, and we had an office on Brooklyn Avenue, and uh, everything was going good. And then my wife dra dra um, dragged me to a play. And as we were sitting in Michael Basden's play, Men Cry in the Dark, because I was toiling with evangelism versus just pastoring because to be honest with you i had become bored with pastoring because i had sons and daughters in the lord i've taught them they need to be out doing their own thing and teaching other people and doing you know so so we're gonna just keep doing the same thing and the lord said as i was sitting there he said your vision or, or your calling is to do plays in movies and travel the world and I was like, wow. He said, and you're going to have to give up this comfort zone in order to, to do that. You can't have them both at this time. And I went and told my, I, I wept there in the, in the play. My wife looked at me. It was like, this play is not that good. <laughs> you cry. She's a straight shooter, honey. She's crazy. And so, um, <laughs> And so um, told the ministerial staff, Pastor, we can't do this. You don't even know what it takes to do it. I said, no, I didn't know what it, know what it took to uh, take to build an art, but he did it. And so went on from there, church mess started. And that's, and you had your share of yes. <laughs> being a part and seeing church yes. mess. It was amazing. And that, it, and in 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 and that's oh my God, I'd never seen struggle in assignment like that before. We had good days, bad days, homeless days. Uh, and I and I would say to God, I'll do this if I gotta sleep in the car. Because I know this is what you call me to do. And one thing that you gotta know, when God tells you what you're supposed to be doing, you can't play around with it you just got to know it and you know in something just the, the the assignment of suffering comes along with the the resurrection process jesus said that. jesus said jesus said lord if it be you if it be that will take this bitter cup from me but he knew all the time that it was not his will and that he he must go through this there are some things we must go through that that will build your character that will build your faith that will build your relationship jesus also said to know me is to suffer with me you know uh, there there is no street three steps to to being highly anointed the way to be an anointed is going it's a suffering way you're going to go through some things that that will make you even cringe now i tell folks how do you know that you're anointed because there's some things in your life that you can close your eyes and you can still cry because you still feel the pain and the fury of what you were going through that you still feel the crushing there's some things right now no matter what platform I'm in, whether I'm talking to Damon John from Shark Tank or I'm talking to Billy Bob on the street, there's some things in my life that I can I can be in a room crowded with people and sometimes I zone out in, in, in tears uh, uh, and they don't know what I'm crying for, but they don't know the pain that I went through. And, and, and be, being homeless out on the road and knocking on doors and going from church to church and 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 and, and just doing what God I knew God told me to do and robbing Peter to pay Paul and not having bank accounts because every all of them were 
uh, overdrawn and then you in check systems and you can't get a bank account, you can't get a credit card and going to check cash in places, um, still finding a way to do what God has called you to do and, and waiting seven years <laughs> so you can get a bank account again and waiting seven years so you can you can you know, 11 years so bankruptcy will fall off of your credit uh been there done that did all of that um and, and so the, the 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 irony of it is um god is still good in the midst of it because there's always somebody worse off than always you. And, and so we, we that's why the scripture says in all things give thanks because they're, 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 you can see God in anything anything and I would thank God even in the midst of so I well let me get back to that so I I, I learned from a message I preached 20 something years ago even before I went through all of this um entitled what do you do when your assignment is affliction and I had to make that applicable uh, applicable rather to my life to my and i was like okay now that sounded good <laughs> but it don't feel good and 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 going through this i mean lady d i mean we were traveling on the road i remember we had a new expedition somebody one of one of the ministers put oil um uh in the wrong thing i think in the brake fluid or something and uh part in the whole thing blew up um i mean it, it's just so many things it's so many stories of pain and and that was fine all of that was fine i think it hit me the worst though and um in 2015 after we had been on the road for many many years and we were going through um this a whole nother level of depression and warfare because as you know me and my wife both uh uh you know are singers and um you know in ministry and people began to play us against each other and yeah and all and we ended up separating in 2015 and um she had gotten sick um i know witchcraft was somewhere involved and um, it, it, it was just a mess. She had gotten sick and uh, moved to DC. And I said, well, I just can't see myself not being a part of my kids' lives because I've been a part of their lives, all of their lives, and even being a part of her life. How is this going to work? So I moved to DC and it's, it just still wasn't working in DC. And it was one of the most depressive moments and depressing times of my life. And while I was in exile and, um, and, and I left DC rather, um, first I went to Wilmington, Delaware on my way to New York. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's where I began to write Justice on Trial. And the Lord was shifting me then. And I, I guess he allowed the separation to happen at that time. So I would be in that place of, see some of your greatest moments will come when you at your lowest place. I was actually sleeping on a friend's floor in Wellington, Delaware on a, on a floor mattress. And, um, and here was this guy that's been across the world that's, that's been through this, you know, you know, I'm not supposed to be sleeping on the wellness floor. I'm not supposed to be going through this now. And 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 you have to ask yourself, will will I will I ever live again? <laughs> will, you know, is, is this it? And 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 uh, those were some days that God was pouring into me, but at the same time, I felt like I was dying. And um, and so I, I wrote the frame of Justice on Trial there in the basement in Wilmington, Delaware. And then I moved to, uh, to New York and stayed in my car there for a, a while. And then my next assignment was to go to Connecticut where I too stayed in my car at the rest stop there for a couple of weeks. 
um, in my first week there, I had I had not been on the road in a while, and I was almost scared to go on the road. And we had we had started doing a show called Family Mess then, and we had shifted from church mess. And um, my first week there, um, and I, as I would go out to promote, my self esteem was so so low. And the Lord said to me, He said, "Go to church when you go to church to promote this Sunday." no matter how low you feel know that i'm with you and you can do all things through me who strengthens you and i went into that church and the lord the lord said oh when you open up your mouth to sing i'm gonna show up and i sang i need thee and i talked about the play and um never met these people never met the pastor um, that day alone, at the end of the day, I had did over ten thousand dollars in sales. And uh, and God said, "I told you, I'm with you. you. You're going to come out of this. You're going to live again. You're going to breathe again." And and every week from there, the favor of God was just on me in in that city, and um, and just kept on, kept on, kept on with that. And my wife would come every other week uh, to help market. And I would see the kids every other week. And I went to this service uh, with this prophet, one of my, well, one of my musician friends had asked me to come and do praise and worship for him at a revival that particular night. And I wasn't feeling well, but I went anyway. And uh, this prophet comes in and I was like, I'm not in the mood to hear nobody prophesy. I'm just, I done heard it before. I'm sick of it. I, I just like, I'm deuces, I'm out. <laughs> and, uh, and, but I had one of my spiritual sons there in Connecticut with me. And I told him, I said, I gotta go to the store. I'll be back to pick you up. He called me. He said, dad, you need to come back in here. He said, even if it's for five minutes, come please. I beg you. I walked back in. As soon as I got in, the, the man of God, and he was from Brooklyn where I lived. <laughs> I didn't know it. And he, and he said, the man of God said, man of God. He said, prophet. Oh, he said, oh yeah, I see your gift. You, you can't hide. He said, I see where you've traveled up and down the road and black Mercedes and where the tires have blown. Uh, about 10 times in different places, but God never let you get into a place where that was not help. He said, he said, um, he said, I see where you've had some success, but I, I'm, I'm here to tell you that your success has not been anything like it's going to be. He said, I see the $40 million, the $60 million contracts. I see the major networks. I see the BETs, the ABCs, the NBCs and CBSs and all of that. So I'm like, yeah, okay. You probably could Google me and 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 yeah, kind of come up with a conclusion whether it's true or not. And so that's why I was thinking. Now this is where I knew he was. He, he said to me, he said, "You have not sang your best song. You've not preached your best message. You've not done your best play or movie. You've not done your best work." I said, okay. He said, and another thing, he said, I see where the enemy has tried to separate you and your wife and your family. But he said, God's going to put you back together again. <laughs> and that's when I, I fell out. I cried. I, 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 I was like, okay, this, because he had no way of knowing that. But right after then, my wife comes and kids show up in New York. And, uh, and, I was I had saved about probably about fifty thousand um, dollars because I would pay my child support, you know, pay my bills, and I was able to save. Well, so when when they when they showed up in New York, I said, "Uh oh, <laughs> it's, it's going you. to start leaving." <laughs> bless you, bless you. <laughs> And, and, oh, and so my wife has a rust phobia so mm -hmm. um everywhere it was, she couldn't stay in this small place that i was in because i was in the studio mm -hmm. and, you know five people so 
I started, we started just, I said, okay, I just get a hotel until mm -hmm. we find a place. But my credit was not mm -hmm. up to par at that time because of things I had gone through. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so either you have to put a whole lot of money down or you have to have good credit or both in some cases to get in a place that ain't rusty or nice, et cetera. And I, I wasn't about to live in no ghetto now. <laughs> And uh, and so, no pun intended, and no harm if somebody want to live in the ghetto. You, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But started this hotel thing. Lady, lady did. And it lasted for about a year and a half. I don't know how in the world I was spending like five hundred dollars a day, and I was making money. Doors were open, but if I make if I make forty thousand dollars, you you do the math five hundred dollars a day. I mean, it was like, and I was like, this is a lot of pressure, but at the same time, it was worth it because God was putting my family back together again. And we, it, and when I look at it now, we had to stay in that small room, hotel room together because God wanted us to bond. It was like That's having right. a, a, a Iona fix my life without her being there. Tell your mother That's you right. love her, tell your mother you love her. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> so, right. Um, you can't get it, you're too close. Yeah, yeah. And so God was bonding us again, you know, cause my kids didn't know me. Uh, because I would be traveling all the time. So mm -hmm. a lot of condensed time. And um, and then, um, you know, after a year and a half, the Lord opened it up. Um, restoration came again on, an, on another level. And it was like, when Justice on Trial came out and it, it sh like shifted us like, you know, on a whole another plane plateau. And um, and so it, it was like, wow, man, you know, this is it, it, when God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. <laughs> it, it's just that you know, I, I, I've I've lived it in in to the point that you don't even feel like it's real. It's like, is this like really real? Like, um, like for real? You know, like it had been so like, long. You know, yeah. when you're in a place of affliction for a period of time, sometimes it just becomes a place of the norm. Yeah. You know, yeah. but you have somebody this morning. You're helping somebody today understand affliction being their assignment and how it shall come to an end at some point. It yeah. shall yeah. pass. Trouble don't last always. It is. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver us out of all of them. But you have all to stay steadfast. You got to be steadfast and you got to stick to it. You got to, you got to obey God, even when it seems like it's crazy. Mm -mm -mm. And so, and, and it seemed like it was crazy. Here we are living in a hotel in New York. Well, why don't you just pack up and, and go back down South where it's cheaper, you know, but that's not what God told me to be, told me Man. to be in New York. Uh. And so it, 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 it's, it's, and then, then all of our, our cars tore up. <laughs> Either they, I've had about 17 cars I've lost either doing repossession or tearing up in my lifetime. Thank God you're not attached to material things. They are things exactly. that come and go, you exactly. know, because look where you are now. Look at where you are because you remain faithful and God himself proves himself faithful. Exactly, exactly. So what? nobody but God. Nobody but God, and 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 I would see the hand of God. Just God, it, the change came in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Um, it, it 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 was so God was so smooth, and He said, "You know why?" He said, "You you never you never died, or you never." Even in your worst points in life, I still made a way. He said because. I've never seen my the righteous forsaken. Well, you know, I translate that word through Abraham, those that believe me, I believe he believed him and he considered that righteous. Uh -huh. I've never seen those that believe me, that really believe me, that shout and, and turn flips and then don't believe him. 
not dance around the church and Ika Mashanda kick him in the knee and all of that and don't believe a thing. But I've never seen those that really believe me uh -huh. forsaken. Mm. Neither the seed beg for bread. He mm. said, he, he, he said, he said, I, I can do it for you because you, he said, you prove you really believe me. Even when it don't, even when it seemed like it, it was going opposite. Now right. I've seen throughout your testimony how the village played a role. Oh yeah. Because from different cities and different people, you know what I'm saying? People that you crossed. In your words, you know, and that's preparing to close, what is, what is the contribution from the village? How important is the village when it comes you know, to... You know what, Lady D, I can easily answer that. I met brothers and sisters, even such as yourself, on this journey over a hundred and something cities that are family for life. That, for life. That, 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 that I know that love me and I love them that's that suffered with me went on journeys and went on Jesus. trips we can't we can't tell it all we can't tell about no, we your can't. sins don't you get is. started but, uh, <laughs> 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 that's why she got the ponytail now y'all you know? <laughs> oh my god but, but 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 traveling as you know sometimes all night long and we would eat in the car cracker barrel was our second oh home yeah. for eating and when we could uh, afford to go there yeah yeah and, you know we we went through that so i mean i met good people you know it, rem it reminds me as we were talking before about o oprah um ruth and naomi um to 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 find the roofs um that that i found on this journey i helped me to do it i couldn't have done it I couldn't, Thank you, 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 you know, connecting with you when, when going through that season in Georgia, that was life. That was, that, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was breathing life. It, everything. In, you know, in, 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 into me, um, in, into, into what I, I, I would be one day. Um, you know, you, 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 you saw things or uh, a hope for me when I didn't see hope for me sometimes. And we need people like that to, 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 to be a part of our lives. And, and, and to, so the, the journey, the, the village that I've had, it's, it's compiled of so many people. And I would look, um, you know, if I were to look back, even because, you know, I don't drive anymore. I stopped driving three years ago when I got into a bad accident. And I never liked driving anyway, so. Um, you got to drive now, so you don't have to drive. It, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so, um, um, but even when I was on the road, and I, I was in L.A., I found a, a, a driver, a driver, a special driver for me out in L.A. Um, in, anywhere I go, um, God's always... Um, just he's sent provision and it, it's like it's like I, i'm only just following this being the the, the 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 piece of the puzzle god is the one putting it together yeah and so 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 i thank god for you know and the, the hurt that i mean it did, did it hurt me when and i'll say oprah like oprah left um you know naomi oh yeah it hurts when folks leave you and you want them to be there uh, when you really make it, but it shows that they never really believe you would make it anyway. Because if Oprah knew that 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 um, Naomi was gonna go back home, and and then that that Ruth was gonna marry the richest man in town, and that Naomi then was gonna be like his mama, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a, you know a, a, what they say a shot caller, ball big baller shot caller, she would have never. Yeah, she wouldn't have never went back. Um, so there are people, you know, like you know, that were with us, mm -hmm. um, that, that, you know, I think like, wow, um, I, I'll, I'll just say their stage name, like Deacon Henry, that how do you invest all of those years and then just walk away? I, I can't do something I don't believe in. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and so I, I often think like, wow, you know, man, they, 
you know, they're somewhere selling some insurance. And but you know, people are seasoned. They're seasonal in your life, brother. And you got to yeah. remember where you're going sometimes, people can't go with you. But That's they are true. part of that process. Yeah, you know? to, make you, to make you stronger. And guess listen. what? The benefit is for them as well. Yeah. Well, so listen, it, in that scripture, Lady D, um, the Bible says that when Oprah left, they kissed her goodbye. <laughs> and God will give you the gift of kissing goodbye. And guess what? It's okay. It's okay. Because you don't want that weight. It's like, mm -hmm. where you going? Where you were when there are people in your life there for where you were. They can't handle where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you can just shake it off and let people be and wish them well. Hallelujah. That's right. And see, real family are those that see you in the spirit and not in the flesh. And I often say that your next connections will be people that see you in the, the spirit, not in the flesh. They see you in your future, not in your now. And, and that's how you know that those people will be with you or part of your life forever. I put up a picture today on Facebook of a friend, my, my best friend from childhood. We've been friends for 43 years. I seen that. I just glimpsed at it and just felt some kind of way and came on out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, we moving on. No, we're going to have our picture up now. <laughs> but, you know, you take you and, you and I. We even though you know we went through a season where we were both in different cities, it's like we never were, were apart. Because That's our spirit, family. Yeah, our we're family, our spirits were we've been brother and sister from the first day <laughs> that we met. We when you walk to the radio station. You for the record, in the 27 years I've done radio, you have been a number one guest. You oh, changed the whole place. world. It was like, oh my God. Wow. Better days. Thank you. That's an honor. Oh, yes. We have so many fun times. You know, there's two times um, where Jesus talks about, or, or the Bible talks about uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. And one was <laughs> the bomb in Gilead, and the other one is laughter that's so good, like medicine. It was such a healing process, you know, with. <laughs> Because we were all going through different yes. things. Yeah. Yes. Like, like life changing yes. things, but you know, trusting God at the same time. But 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 laughing oh my was, God. was <laughs> you know, just I just thank God for you and for your ministry and and uh and, and what you are doing, what you have done in the many years you have sown and how God is blessing you and continuing to open up doors. And as I have said, um, you know, um, the Lord's gonna open up a door within not just the church world because you're bigger than the church world. You're a kingdom person. And, and if you just church, you just have that component. They won't even understand you. No, not Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the king, but the kingdom, the kingdom of you know, when we're seeing that is so much, it's so it's filled with people that may never walk into a church building, but they love God. Absolutely. And they, and they need a word. They need healing. They need they they need deliverance. They need help. And uh, and that's where I see you know God taking you you know you. within within the Hollywood infrastructures and oh amen. Yeah, in, in in so many places. So I'm I'm excited for you. Just don't forget me when you're on the red carpet and stuff. We're gonna be there together. I'm That's like, come right. here. <laughs> <laughs> At least can I borrow my brother just for a moment? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, you know what? It has been a pleasure this morning to uh uh talk to you. It's like not just the day being an amazing day of expectation, but you have dropped so much you know, to the place to where it's like air, where people can just breathe in, you know, 
the, the amazingness that's going to take place this week because you have uh, just defined what it means to, uh, for affliction to be your assignment and how you can just grow from it and how you come out of it victoriously. All right, praise but you God. Have to, you have to stay steadfast. You have to remain steadfast. You have to be obedient. And of course, I heard you saying there were times when you like, Lord, oh God, you know, you even considered a, a suicide. There are normal feelings that you begin to even have to struggle and fight with. I pray that people hear that today. I yeah. pray they hear that you were normal yeah. throughout oh, the whole yeah. process. I couldn't, Lady D, I couldn't stop believing God. It, it, even in my lowest I could, still could not stop believing God. And I would say, if I jump off this building, knowing that God has commissioned me to live and not die, that what's going to happen is if I, if I jump off this building and run in front of a truck, I'm going to be retarded in a wheelchair. Look at all. Because he would, he would, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been your assignment to die. It, exactly. And I said, no. Because I, 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 you I, still had to fulfill your purpose. You still got to fulfill purpose. It, 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 and so, you know, being, you know, that it, um, at the end of the day, it really boils down to belief in obedience. And, 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 and I, I, you know, I was, I was saying today, you know, I got um, Justice on Trial, the movie out on Amazon Prime. Um, that's um, ready to even get on some more networks. That's but, an amazing oh, movie. I had the pleasure you. of looking at it and I just, man, it's a tearjerker. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a tearjerker. You need to see it. And you know, with us getting ready to close, this is a good opportunity for you to go ahead and announce to everybody what's out right now that they can go ahead and look at and what's coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and thank you for that opportunity. Justice on Trial, the movie, Amazon Prime, Amazon, if you, most people have Amazon. Uh, it's just like Netflix. It's actually it's bigger than Netflix. Um, around the world, you can get it. It's the number it's one social media with honey. Amazon, only thing that's done stood still throughout this pandemic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it's the it's the number one social justice movie in the country. Oh it deals God. with two civil rights attorneys suing the U.S. Justice Department for reparations and damages done to African Americans while bringing back time traveler witnesses such as Harriet Tugman, Medgar Evers, and Emmett Till into a modern day courtroom to tell their stories to a mixed jury, black, white, and Hispanic. And it gets real, it's uh, real encouraging to watch. Yes, it is. Yes, ma'am. We got Revival, the movie, which is all black uh, well i'll say predominantly black cast um and that's the story of jesus the book of of uh john uh, molly music plays jesus shaka khan michelle williams um you name it uh, that's in it um we have a, a a movie that's coming out next year that uh that we're doing uh called super turn now it's not a church movie but it's an inspirational piece for the hip hop community that shows dealing with them on their level and shows how they can turn around. The guy that played Biggie Smalls and the Biggie Smalls by mm -hmm. pick is uh, one of the leading stars in it. Tori Hart, Kevin Hart's ex-wife and Harry Lennox, of course, and, uh, and many, many more um, uh, are in that movie. And then we got Church Mess, the movie that we are uh, casting and filming for that, uh, will be out on next year as well and uh, and and we have a movie also trouble waters is going to be on bet it's in the b that we lord opened up a door and now, now we've connected a partnership with uh, bet trouble waters will be on bet starting december the 10th mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the documentary um called the church uh, yesterday, today, and forevermore. And it's a depiction of the church's um, highest point to the pandemic and to where we go in the future. Mm. So it's, 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 a, it's a, a plethora of um, uh, movies and uh, diversity that uh, that's out there. But so check us out. You can Google Chad Lawson Cooper, Chad Lawson Cooper, 
uh, movies and plays on Facebook and you'll see the blue button. So you'll know it's me. Um, mm -hmm. Also, um, you will have um, um, Instagram uh, to go to as well. Chad Lawson Cooper there. Uh, Google Justice on Trial the Movie. There's just so much going on. So keep us, continue to keep us in your prayers. And uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited about what God is doing. Well, you know, God is faithful. Uh, I thank God that you went back to the church to hear uh, that word uh, from the mouth of, of the prophet, you know, speaking on behalf of God, because all that he spoke has come to pass. You are not a millionaire. And you're also very successful and, and you, your family, you got your family back. Every, it's bigger than what he even said. It's even yep. greater than what he said. And it's you just begun. Even it's 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 all, it's like it's <laughs> Listen, just begun. And I'm yep. thankful. See, the Lord had to ready you for this moment, dear. God had to ready you. That's what all that was about. And humility plays a role in him readying us. But oh, what absolutely. we're prepared for right now. Am I right about it? Absolutely. You're right Amen. about it. Amen. Well, I'm telling you, I am just elated. I'm so excited. It's like, you know, I got coffee right here next to me and I drink my coffee black. But this coffee ain't done nothing for me, honey, based <laughs> off of this conversation. What you have <laughs> conversed with me today is exactly what I have needed. You know, just a pick me up, just to remind me God ain't through with me yet. Yeah. And I pray that for those mm. that are listening today, that you receive what I've received. God is not yes. through with you yet. No matter the way it looks, forget about it. Keep on yes. pushing and keep on keeping on. I want to remind everybody to please follow a Relationship Lounge 19 uh, uh, on IG, Facebook, and also on Twitter for Reveal and Heal. Thank you so much for being faithful, Facebook family, to tuning in to uh, Motivation Monday. You know, you can't heal what you don't reveal. And That's you've right. heard the story today from Pastor Cooper letting you know the importance of revealing and healing. He's still sharing. Ain't no shame in his game. He is still sharing. And he has shared to thousands today that they may be healed. Amen. Thank you once again, brother. I love and appreciate you. you. We got to catch up. And you know, you, you got to cast me. You got to yeah, cast me. Well, that's, that's given. You know, you, you already going to be in church, Mr. Moo, because that's, that's, that's a comedy that's anyway. So you, the play. that's yeah. it. That's it. That's yeah. it. We, and I've always we, said. Reveal and heal too. I've always said, and this is for your audience, you are too talented not to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Get that in your spirit, audience. You're too talented not to be a millionaire. And on that note, we are going to close. Oh, my God. Uh, Listen, you. ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you today. Keep on pushing. Keep on pressing. Do not stop. Monday is a new beginning. New week, new goals. I'll say it again. New week, new goals. Thank you for tuning in to Motivation Monday. I'm Coach Dale. Have an amazing day. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>